Okay, we are looking at the meaning of the irrational number e. e is like pi. It's a decimal. Uh, it's a number with a decimal part that goes on and on and on forever. It never forms a pattern and never repeats. And it's a bit of a mystery, but hopefully this will help you understand where it comes from a little bit. So I'm starting with kind of a concrete example. Suppose we have $500. We're going to put it in the bank for 10 years. Okay, so at the end of the first year, we have $530 because it's 6% interest, all right? But then at the end of the next year, we have interest on our 500, but we also have interest on that $30. So after 10 years, um, we've, we've uh, received 10 interest payments, and our total amount would be about $895.42. I've chopped off the post cents numbers. Um, if we were to compound it quarterly, that's checking on the, uh, the amount and sort of re-adding the interest four times a year, we're going to get interest on our interest at a little bit higher rate, so it jumps from 895 up to 907. If we were to figure our interest every month, 12 times a year, that would jump up to 909. Okay, this compounding is relatively straightforward. This is how many times we have, we have the bank uh, figure out our interest and then we add that into the account because we're earning money on our money. So by adding more compoundings you're adding little slivers of interest um, more frequently and so it builds up but you can see that by going up from 52 times a year to then checking out our interest and adding it in 365 times to hourly our return on this extra work is getting less and less and less until you can see it's basically going to be $911.06. It's just adding more to the really small end of the numbers there, not really making much difference at all. So they're sort of diminishing returns, as they say. If I were to guess, I could keep doing it to fractions of seconds, and this is really not going to change much at all. And that would be called instantaneously compounding. Okay? So understand how we can kind of work with this we're going to think of a really straightforward example where we don't have $500, we just have $1. Our interest rate isn't 6%, it's actually 100%, so our money is doubling. But we'll let it only go for a year. So we're going to make, write a simple equation like this, 1 plus then 1 for our interest rate of 100% over n to the nth. Okay. So this is a little bit different way of thinking about it. And if we let n go to infinity, all right? n is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What's going to happen to our function value, all right? So as n gets very, very, very large, this is going to get closer and closer and closer to 1 over a large number, which will be very, very close to 0. So think about it, 1 over a 1,000, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion. That's getting very, very close to 0 as this goes to infinity. If I'm adding 1 plus 0, well, that's just going to get closer and closer and closer. So this is getting closer to 1. But up here, my exponent, that's getting closer and closer and closer to infinity. So it's a big tug of war between 1 to a large exponent, which would just be 1, because 1 times itself, infinite number of times, is going to be 1. Or if I have a little bit more than 1 raised to an infinite power, that'll tend to explode towards infinity, even if it's just a little bit more than 1. So what's going to happen? All right. So what I want you guys to do is make a little chart. All right. So it's going to be a simple chart where you put in values for n. Here are your n values. And well, let's see. Um, you know what? I should have made that x, but it's okay. It's too late now. And so we'll just make this be n. That'll be a little bit better. All right. Sorry about that. That's kind of sloppy. But here we go. F of n. All right. So if I plug in one. 1 over 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 to the first power is just 2, okay? If I plug in 2, 1 half plus 1 is 1.5, 1 1.5 squared is going to be 2.25, all right? I've done the first two for you. You're going to put in 3, so it'll be 1 plus 1 third to the third. You're going to put in 4, 5, 6, 7, and then after that jump to 10, and jump to 100, and jump to 1,000, and then jump to something really big. How about 1 million, all right? And then see if you can predict 
what this is getting closer and closer and closer to, all right? And that's going to be our value E. See if you can figure out what that number is and memorize it to say four digits, all right? That's your work. Good luck.